Hey there, friendlies. How's up? There we go. So, it is Sunday the 17th. Are we the 17th? It's Saturday <laughs> the 17th of uh, December. It is a glorious, uh, well, it's, it is a glorious zero degrees uh, on the nose. That's zero degrees Canadian, which I believe is 32 degrees freedom. Uh, and today I have something I've been wanting to get my hands on for a while. So uh, I'm a little jazzed about it. And it is this baby. Port Charlotte 10 year heavily peated single malt scotch whiskey. Interesting thing about Brooklyn Attic is that um, I'm not sure if they've completely discontinued the tins, at least for sales over there, but uh, they offer an option of not getting the tin. And if they could give me that option here in Canada, I'd be pretty happy about it. Look at that bottle. Uh, I believe when Poor Charlotte first came out, it, it was a much more recognizable Brooklyn bottle, um, but I like this. Uh, but there I'm starting to get into notes and I don't want to do that yet. What I want to do first is crack this baby open and let it sort of sit there for 10 minutes. For part of that, I'll talk to you guys. For part of that, I'll just sort of turn off the camera and walk away. So, let me see. Because it is snowing upon me and it's kind of wet, zero degrees is, is like, yay, it's at freezing, except that it's kind of not when it's a snowy day like this. It's, it's a wet snow. So stainless steel knife because carbon steel would not get along well with this i'm gonna just try to take this off on camera sorry guys i should i should really get my uh how come it cold hand so it's slipping on the plastic come on fool there we go keep that all right let's crack this open oh wow <laughs> okay, let's put that right there. Put that back on there. Put this here for a minute. Should we turn the camera a little bit to show the, the bootail? Hmm. It's sort of rid of some of this snow here. Put the bootail there. Turn the camera just a little bit. There we go. You guys know that I like Brooklatic, um, one of my favorite distilleries in many ways. Uh, it's really hard to say this is my favorite distillery. I mean, I find that when it comes to real bang for the buck, guys like Aaron sort of get the uh, the edge over Brooklatic a little bit, but um, I like their their philosophy. I like the way they do their juice, and I have yet to taste a Brooklatic anything that I have not loved. Um, um, I've had Octomorphs before, and I dearly love them. I have not had a Black Art because uh, I have to pay for food and mortgages. Well, one mortgage. And kids. <sighs> that didn't come out right, but anyways. Uh, so what do we got here? So this is um, a heavily peated, it's a 10 year, obviously, um, 40 PPM, I believe. Uh, the maturation profile is kind of interesting. It's 65% first fill American casks, 10% second fill American, and then the remainder, uh, 25, I think, is uh, French wine casks, uh, second fill. I don't know what the wine is. I'm assuming it's a red of some sort, um, but, I don't know, sounds interesting to me. It makes me interested in knowing what exactly I'm going to experience when I get my hands on that glass right there. Um, I don't know what else to really tell you about. Uh, so I'm just gonna go away for a few minutes and let this breathe, okay? I'll be right back. So first off, let's talk about the design, okay? The look and feel. Mixed bag, 
I love it. I think it's very classy. Um, I said before that I would rather not have tins just in terms of waste and stuff, but the tin is here. Uh, I think it's very good looking. The, the color choices are spectacular. Look at that bottle. That's a dark green bottle, which happens a lot when something uh, is uncolored. Um, it's got a dramatic look, but it's not over the top. Dramatic and yet still very, very tasteful. Um, let's just stick that in the snow. I love the embossed Islay Single Malt Port Charlotte Progressive Hebridean Distillers on the back. Just beautiful. Absolutely love it. Um, however, clearly designed by someone, well, this may be bombast, but it comes across as something designed by a young person. By which I mean, it's hard as heck to read some of the stuff on here, right? Like here, the text is very small, but at least it's high contrast, okay? We believe an Isley whiskey should live and breathe the fresh salt tang of salty air. Great, I get that. But like the 50% ABV, there's like, that's way low contrast. And then under here, uh, this is all like products of Scotland and stuff like that. But I mean, it it sort of gets in the way when the information is not legible, not easily legible. Uh, what I'm looking, okay, this is all just marketing piffle. But like somewhere on here, it says uh, unchill filtered and natural color, but I can't bloody find it. I saw it. Yeah, okay. It's right here in the part that you can hardly see because of the contrast. Distilled, matured, and bottled, non-chill filtered, and coloring free at Brickladic Distillery, Isle of Isla, Scotland. So, look, I gotta take points away from that. Like, there's a crap ton of something here, but I, you know, I'm 50 years old, guys. And I'm not just saying that as an old guy, you know, oh, this youngin's got off my lawn. I'm saying that as someone who is aware that a lot of the people, a lot of the whiskey anoraks are not 24 with great eyes. I mean, healthy, whatever, whatever. Uh, so beautiful packaging, not well thought out in, in certain ways. Um, I forgot to say, uh, it's good in the hand, but a, a little awkward for, for pouring. Um, 750 mil, which is nice full of North American size. Uh, packaging, I'm gonna give it a 70, because I think it looks so damn beautiful, but there's some usability issues. So, there we go, 70. Now, let's get into the juice. Okay, do a little swirly swirl, taking a look. We know this is unchill filtered, we know this is natural color. It's getting a little hazy, because you know, we are at the uh, freezing temperature here in Montreal today. Um, tears aren't bad. I'm expecting a nice sort of an oily mouthfeel. Gonna go in on to the schnoz. It's 50% ABV. So, oh. oh, it's sweet right off the bat. I was expecting, because this is all like heavily peated, I was expecting like a peat, you know, but first off is like a toffee. I mean, I'm getting sort of the, the vanillas that you get with American oak. Raisins? I want to say sultanas because so many people say sultanas, but I've had actual sultanas like three times in my life, but I'm definitely getting something raisiny. Okay, now there's the peat, a little peat smoke. Um, vegetal too, though. I'm liking everything. What, what I'm afraid of getting on this, okay, I haven't seen it yet is those of you who know me or have watched many of my videos will know that I'm great with Pete. I love smoke. I love brine. I love that, 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 but I really don't like the band-aid, the medicinal note. And so I'm really, I'm hoping that I don't get one of those in this. That's the kind of thing I should have looked up before throwing my money down. Cause if I'm getting like a big medicinal thing on either nose or palate, then that was an expensive mistake. But I don't want to look up 
the, the tasting notes before I buy something because I'm going to, you know, do a video on it. But so far I'm not getting a lot of medicinal crap. Citrus though. I like that. It's very nice. Orange peel maybe? Like, the citrus, I don't know if it's a an orange or if it's lemons, but like almost lemon candies. Malty, malt sugar. Yeah, the peat smoke just dances across the top. But I don't hate it. I don't, I, you know, I'm not angry at it because I'm not getting, you know, a face full of peat. Oh, it's nice. Um, so balanced. 86. Absolutely. I don't regret that. 86. Absolutely sure of it. So I'm going to taste it. Go to the palate, as the uh, snobby snobs say. Wow. Uh, wow. <sighs> I, I don't even know what to say. There's a creaminess there that I was not expecting. Uh, citrus is there, big time. The, the peat sort of happens first, but it's not like it's not pushing everything along it's it's dancing on the top there's this that lemony thing again but instead of like a, a candy a, like a lemon candy like a lemon drop or something it, it seems a bit more like a lemon pie filling a little bit uh, it's changing a bit back into the candy but it, you know it was a, because of the creaminess at the beginning it sort of reminded me of that and it's still there it's just so much happening there's a spiciness, of course. Um, it's, it's, it's a peppery, not like a white pepper, a black pepper. Smoke is there, absolutely. These flavors are dancing with each other. And that vegetal note is still there. There's a grassiness, it's a meadow. Yeah, there's That raisiny thing is definitely there. I'm getting a pear or apple, like a green apple or a pear, something like that. Vanilla is still there. It it matches the nose, but it's is bigger, but not bigger in 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 a scratchy way. It's it's fuller. Is that a real word? Fuller, more full, fuller, fuller, right? Yeah. Mouthfeel is excellent. Nicely oily, nicely viscous, but not too much. It's not like you know, not thick. And the finish, it just keeps going. I'm gonna take another sip. I kind of feel that there's a cough drop element in the finish. There's the medicinal. It's just coming in just at the just on the RSN there, just in the finish. Touch of the medicinal, but I can handle this. It it, it almost wasn't noticeable. It sort of snuck up the back like that. The, the, the smoke and, and the sweet, I just, it goes, it goes. And there's like a, a croissant thing happening at the very end. 89 on the taste. Absolutely. So of course, we'll put a little drops in. Did you guys see that? I'm right under a cedar tree, so every now and again if a breeze comes. Okay, so I'll give it a little swirly swirl to let the volatiles volatiliate. Um, and then we'll talk about the checklist. Okay, water changes it. Not in a terrific way, but in an interesting way. Um, brings out the medicinal aspect like a lot um, 
peat smoke is still there. The first thing that happened was like the lemon drop hit and then disappeared right away. Uh, left me with the medicinal and now there's the peat smoke. Uh, the water does not improve this though. Mm. Mm. Checklist. Okay, what do we got? This is a single malt scotch. This has an age statement, 10 years. This is 50% ABV. This is non-chill filtered and natural color. So that's full marks for the checklist. For value, I don't like talking about value too much because the prices vary so wildly. Where I live, the value on this is not awesome for a 10 year because it's kind of noticeably above 100 bucks. Where I bought this, was 4,400 kilometers away in Alberta, where it was just under a hundred bucks. Um, I've seen this for closer to 50, 60 bucks uh, in the States. Uh, British pricing is amazing. I think it was 33 pounds or something. Um, so it's hard to really say. Um, in terms of what Brooklady charges for some of their heavily peated though, uh, the value is pretty damn good. Um, I would say, I'm just sort of putting this up against some of the other 10-year peters that I have, like the light chicken, stuff like that. Uh, I would give this a 79 for value, because it's, it's not a bad price. It's just not like a stonking deal. So like, design, nose, taste, checklist, value equals this. So. That's all she wrote. Thanks for hanging out with me while I reviewed this Port Charlotte tent, which I've been meaning to get my hands on for a long time. As I always say, if you like what I'm doing, please do the following three things. One, comment down below. This time, what I want to know is, what kind of differences do you think I will find between this and this? Second thing, Please share this video, that helps me more than you could possibly imagine. And third, leave me a smiley thumb. If you don't like what I'm doing, that's alright. Leave me a frowny thumb. Thanks for watching, guys.